in the morning, Alia routinely ran through the underpass to work. She was in her fourth month of pregnancy, thank God. There was no toxicosis, so it was possible to work. It's just that, I was terribly sleepy, and she could barely crawl out of bed in the morning, and then ran like crazy, in the passage. As always, it was crowded and noisy. Tramps habitually stood at the exit, Fekka Kosoy, Mikhail Ivanovich and five other people begged for aunts. Alia could not walk, asked them indifferently, felt sorry for these poor fellows, and, if possible, bought them tea with a pie or a bun. They, heartily thanked her every time. Local flower sellers in the neighborhood were twisting at the temple, some kind of blessed one. It can be sung from the clothes that she is not a rich woman, pregnant, but feeds these parasites, so everyone can stand with outstretched hand. Are you trying to make money, work out all day? He also gives them money because they drink anyway. They could not understand that Alia, like no one else, understands these people and knows how bitter it is to be without a roof over your head, hungry and unhappy. Yes, she understood that many of the homeless drink a lot, but this is only from hopelessness and cold. After all, they stand in the draft all day long and watch passers-by run, rush about business. Someone is waiting for them at home, worried, and no one is waiting for the homeless anywhere. He is alone in the world. Just like her, Alia habitually waved to the tramps and suddenly noticed a new one among them. He was a rather young guy, about 30 years old, with curly long untidy hair on crutches. He didn't call, he didn't ask, he just stood silently and looked somewhere into the distance. Nearby lay a cap, were carrying passers by through change. For some reason, she became so unbearably sorry for him. My God, and I still complain about life. A man has no legs and nothing. He lives in a fit of surging emotions. She bought a hot donut with marmalade and a glass of hot tea and handed it to him. Take it from the heart, bon appetit. The guy was terribly embarrassed and looked at her with such gratitude, thank you, and lowered his eyes, blushing. In order not to embarrass the guy, Alia waved to him and ran on. After what she saw, heavy memories of her childhood flooded over her. She remembered little about her so-called family, her mother who was drunk, fighting and swearing, her stomach constantly cramped from hunger. But as soon as the girl began to cry and ask for food, instead of dinner she received only cuffs and slaps. The house was always dirty, full of empty bottles of surrogate alcohol. On the sticky table the girl sometimes found leftovers from a drunken feast and ate them greedily while no one was watching. The terrible stench from a mixture of alcohol cheap cigarettes and an unwashed body was forever ingrained in my memory. Alia was taken to the orphanage at the suggestion of a compassionate neighbor on Luba. The woman could not look indifferently in what a nightmare little Olchka was growing up. The girl walked alone on the street until dark, even in severe frost. Despite the fact that she was only five years old, nobody ever looked for her, never called her home. Aunt Luba often fed the grimy baby and cried, watching how she greedily, to the point of shaking, bit into the pie she had brought. When the girl was six years old, it became clear that no one was going to send her to school. The alcoholic mother simply did not care where her daughter was or what happened to her. Her maternal instinct has completely atrophied, if it was ever present at all. So when Yuba made up her mind, called the guardianship authorities and told how hard life is for this unfortunate child. When Alia was taken to the orphanage, she cried, screamed, scratched and called for mommy. But she slept soundly after another party, and did not notice everything that was happening at all. The child had a wild hysteria when they cut her hair like a boy, washed her, dressed her in clean but official clothes, and monotonous grey everyday life dragged on. It was also not sweet in the orphanage. The food was not very good. They strictly monitored the behavior and discipline of the pupils. They were always punished for disobedience. But at least they didn't beat me, like at home. Relatives came to some girls, brought toys and sweets, birthday gifts. Alia was always very jealous of them, because only once Aunt Luba came to her, and brought a bag of inexpensive sweets. The unlucky mother never once visited her daughter in the orphanage. Alia carried this resentment and bitterness through all her childhood, and swore to herself that she would never leave her own baby for anything. Alia studied well, she especially liked mathematics and the exact sciences she easily counted in her mind. After graduating from the orphanage, Alia received a room in a hostel from the state. The conditions, they were awful, the floors were rotten, 
The windows should have been replaced a long time ago. Pieces of torn pieces hung on the walls, and a long squash sofa stood modestly in the corner. Together with her friend Ira, Alia, together with her, decided to try to go to college, although she had no particular illusions about this. And to my surprise, I passed the first time, all thanks to excellent knowledge and mathematical abilities. The girl's happiness knew no bounds. She, a pupil of an orphanage, herself, without connections and money, entered the economics department of a prestigious university. She was settled in a good room with two girls from well-to-do families. Anya and Vika were rather windy girls. Their studies only strained them. They often missed lectures and liked to take a walk. Until late, Alia stubbornly gnawed at the granite of science and spent a lot of time in the library. The girls often teased her. Well, you, Alia, give. Spring is in the yard. It's warm. This goes every day, and you, like an old woman, crammed everything, yes crammed, come, hang out with us for a while, but the girl only waved her hand, no, girls, I can't, after all, the session is coming soon, there's no one to help me, if anything, so you just have to, rely on yourself, Vika laughed, well, if so, then will you give lectures to her right, in a friendly way, and we ran, as a result, all Alia's efforts were justified, and she brilliantly closed the last summer session ahead of schedule, and graduated with honors from the first year. Dika and Anu miraculously escaped expulsion, and were angry with Olga. This poor and scribbler just got lucky. You and I are no better. Really, Vika, Anya flared up. Then these two gossips decided to play a trick on Olga. During the summer holidays, almost all students left the hostel, and it was completely empty. Alia was sad and lonely, but she had nowhere to go and no one to go to. There was nothing to do but continue to go to the library and study diligently in addition. Then they appeared on Vika's doorstep with Anya and vied with each other. Oh, we invite you to a picnic. There will be guys from the graduation year, a barbecue, a river. Just don't say what you have to do. This is ridiculous. Now the holidays are in the yard. The girl was pleasantly surprised by this offer. After all, they were not very friendly and communicated. They were too different in character. But she really wanted to relax after a hard study and at least chat with someone, have fun and she gladly agreed, and in fact, what is there to sour, after all, the hot summer sun shone outside the window, summer was in full swing, the cunning plan was such that everyone on the course knew that Alia did not drink, did not smoke, and was generally a little strange, so they decided to get her drunk, and show off enough of an excellent student so that she would not be arrogant, that same picnic turned the whole life of our heroine upside down, from the very beginning, everything went wrong, Alia imagined a warm friendly company, a positive, and a wonderful, holiday, but when they arrived at Vika's dacha, the girl saw a completely different picture, in the gazebo, many adult guys, majors, from rich families, and the same glamorous, relaxed girls gathered, the fun was in full swing, cocktails and champagne, dancing and loud music, Alia felt like a black sheep here, she was uncomfortable, she could not relax, Vika and Annie chatted incessantly about fashionable outfits and cool parties and imperceptibly poured a martini into a glass of juice for the girl. Out of habit, Alia quickly got tipsy. She felt bad. She tried to get up, but her legs did not obey at all. She stumbled and fell, absurdly sprawled on the grass. Immediately, wild laughter began. Instead of helping her, Vika shouted loudly, Just look, our diligent excellent student got drunk. And, she pretended to be a poor sheep. No wonder they say, there are devils in still waters. It's only the beginning. The girl awkwardly got up, brushed herself off. She became bitter and hurt, of the entire cackling crowd. Only one guy held out his hand to her, and tried to help her up. Tears welled up in her eyes, and she just walked away wherever her eyes looked, away from this place. In parting, she looked back, looked at Vika and Anya and shouted, You all, me too, friends, where to go and how to get home. The girl did not know, the dacha was far outside the city, the area was completely unfamiliar. She hobbled along the dusty road, and wept bitterly, the bruised knee hurt, the girl scolded herself for what the light stands, why am I, a fool, stuck here? After all, I knew that the girls in the room were the same. Suddenly, a car drove up behind and someone called her from there. Oh, wait, get in, I'll take you to the hostel. I'm Dima, I'm in my last year of study. The girl paused and looked incredulously at this handsome, athletic guy. It was, he who was trying to help her. She wanted to refuse, 
but she looked into his honest, kind eyes and something sank in her soul. She wiped away her tears and silently got into the car, come what may, anyway, I won't get home on foot alone. The guy reassured her all the way, don't be offended by them, they're just drunk and stupid. Without their wealthy parents, they are nobody, your little finger is not worth it. Well done, proud in character, I heard that. You are an excellent student, and I liked it very much. You are not like everyone else, real. The girl said angrily, I am no match for all of you. Orphanage is simple. I don't have a rich daddy who will solve all problems, and provide everything you need. You are the same too. What do you need from me? I don't trust anyone. The guy quietly put his hand on her shoulder. You can believe me, and suddenly kissed her on the cheek. From this burning, impudent kiss, the earth left from under my feet. My heart was beating wildly and my legs were wobbly. She had never felt this way with anyone. She suddenly felt so good and calm. From that day on, Dima did not leave the girl's head. She couldn't concentrate on her studies at all. As soon as she remembered the touch of his lips, the smell of expensive perfume, then a wave of tenderness and passion rolled over her. With renewed vigor, his muscular shoulders and radiant kind smile floated before his eyes. The girl was angry with herself. What the hell is wrong with me? Well, a rich guy gave a lift. Well, he regretted it. Get him out of your head. You are not a match for him. He must have forgotten to think about me. When Dima found her in the hostel and invited her on a date, all the attitudes that she gave herself instantly disappeared. Alia immediately agreed, gathered for a long time and meticulously brought beauty, no joke, because this is the first date in her life. She was afraid and anxious, but at the same time, the anticipation of the upcoming meeting with Dima gave her confidence. She was worried how to behave with him, what to say. What if he decides that I am an ordinary simpleton and does not want to meet anymore? He is from a rich family. He has been in many places. He is very erudite and relaxed. What about me? But everything went just great. Within half an hour after the meeting, the first excitement passed and they communicated at ease. Dima turned out to be quite simple, not arrogant. There was no arrogance and arrogance in him at all, and how he looked at her. He called me his swallow, smart girl, gave me tender roses. The couple walked around the night city, passionately kissed and could not tear themselves away from each other even for a second. They fell in love with each other in spite of everything. No one, absolutely no one believed that it would last long. Angry and envious girls whispered behind their backs. Well, what did he find in this ugly girl? It's nothing special. Here's a quiet girl for you. She snatched off such a guy. Well, nothing. Love will pass and Dinka will leave her. He must have had a lot of such. Dima's parents were businessmen, respected people in the city. When they found out about their meetings, a violent scandal erupted. Mother shouted, what are you doing, son? Why do you need this orphanage? My father and I have looked after you for a long time from our circle. The deputy's daughter, beautiful. Well, what did you find in this Alia? Dima was amazed at the cynicism of his parents and shouted in response. But how can you not understand? I love her and I will be with her whether you like it or not. This is my choice and my life and it's up to me to decide with whom to live. Then Dimitri's father banged on the table. Oh, so, are you going against the wishes of your parents? Then provide for your own bride. You won't get a dime from me. And then I got used to everything ready to live. Let's see how you sing. But Dima was not a timid ten, and was not going to give up his love. Emotionally, he packed his things and left the parental mansion. Valentina, Dima's mother, screamed at her husband in tears. Step in, why are you so stern? And what if Dima went to her for good, and won't come home? The man grinned, calm down, he will come running in a month, he will not go anywhere, he's a student, he hasn't worked anywhere for a day, love will end quickly when he realizes that there is no money, it will even be helpful for him. The couple began to settle in Alia's room, it was very difficult for Dima to find himself in such harsh conditions, after a luxurious life, he had to get a job as a taxi driver, he tried hard, worked hard, all for the sake of his beloved Olchka. When Dima gently touched her, whispered words of love in her ear. The girl melted and tried to give her fiancé a hundred times more love and affection. Pressing her whole body against the beloved, she thanked heaven. After all, no one had ever loved her so much. They did not notice either the sagging old sofa or creaky floors. They ate fried potatoes with pleasure and saved money. They were fine together, and the rest is completely unimportant. On that fateful morning, Dima had to return from the day. Alia cooked Dinkin's favorite pilaf, 
and busied herself happily in the kitchen. An hour passed, and he was still gone. At first, the girl reassured herself, you never know, maybe they were detained at work, or on the way I met one of my friends, started talking. Anxiety gradually grew in my soul, then panic. When the phone rang, something thumped inside from a bad premonition. An alien, cold voice told her that Dima had crashed to death in an accident. Her hands shook, her legs buckled, everything went dark in her head, and she collapsed to the floor, unconscious. All further events were, as if in a fog, funeral, pain, and terrible, irreparable universal grief. Right at the cemetery, Dima's mother, seeing Alia, threw an ugly tantrum. She howled and shouted, I curse you, the orphanage viper. It's all your fault. Because of you, my boy is gone now. Get out of my sight. How dare you even come here? But Alia did not hear her at all, and did not react in any way. She just stood, unable to move, and quietly cried. The study period began. Alia, like a robot, regularly went to lectures, to the library, returned to her room, locked herself with a key, and howled like a beluga. She shouted, Lord, why, why did you punish me like that? Why did you take away the only dear person? She lay down on the sofa, pressed Dimka's shirt to her, and greedily inhaled his scent, sobbing endlessly. Alia every minute, remembered his sensual lips and strong, dear hands that hugged her every day. It seemed to her that the door would open now, and Dimachka would come in, and say, Hello, my swallow, I'm at home. But the days, dragged on like chewing gum, and he was still gone. She refused to understand that it was forever. Alia hardly ate. She lost a lot of weight. She began to feel sick in the morning. When she finally figured out what was what and thought of take a test, her worst guesses came true. Two lines. She is pregnant. All feelings were mixed up. Thoughts were confused. What? Happiness. I will have a baby from my beloved. The meaning of life. Its continuation. She thought. And then, panic rolled over. But how am I going to raise him alone? What to live on? What will happen to education? Can I manage? In a fit of emotion, she herself came to the house of Dimka's parents and honestly told everything. I still love Dima. I feel so bad. I'm pregnant. You will have a grandson or granddaughter. But I'm so scared to be left alone with a child in her arms. What should I do? She hoped that when they heard the news that they would have a grandson, they would soften, rejoice and at least somehow help her. But Alia was greatly mistaken. She was humiliated, smeared on the wall, and pushed out with the words, Get out, otter walking. Do you want to hang someone else's child around our neck? You won't get anything from us. And don't try to blackmail us, disgrace us or beg for money. You won't get a penny. Will the cash in? What a scoundrel. Ali sobbed, wandered home, and was furious. Oh, so, you don't need a child. Then I'll go to the hospital. I'll solve all the problems in one fell swoop. She fought angrily. When Alia came to the doctor's office the next day, she fidgeted and was very worried, fiddling with the referral. The gynecologist turned out to be an elderly strict woman. Hearing that the patient decided to get rid of from the child, she tiredly took off her glasses from the bridge of her nose and already wanted to send her for tests and a procedure. How many of them come in a day? Years of practice made the doctor an experienced psychologist and she accurately determined her intentions by a woman. But looking at this tearful, frightened fool, suddenly softened. It was clear that the girl was just confused, got into a whirlpool of problems and decided on this sin out of despair and hopelessness. The gynecologist was silent for a while, thought, picked up the right words and said, Listen, dear, you are still very young, inexperienced and not you know life. Take my word for it, if you get rid of the baby, you will regret it all your life. I know a sea of such examples when they bite their elbows, they want to give birth again. But that's it, late, I understand that you have some big problems, since you decided to take such a step. But just think about what he already is, he is alive, he feels everything. The baby is joy and happiness, and difficulties can always be overcome if you do not give up. Do not make an irreparable mistake, then you will repent. Think carefully about my words. Alia suddenly burst into tears and ran out of the office. She scolded herself with the last words. Yes, what kind of mother am I? I swore that I would never give up the baby, but myself. What is better than my good-for-nothing mother? Well, no. That night she dreamed of Dima. He stroked her head, sitting on the edge of the bed, and whispered, Alia, darling, you are strong. You can handle it. Everything will be fine. I am always there and will help you, my swallow. Alia woke up abruptly and began to feel the bed, 
trying to find Dima there. The dream was so realistic, but the room was empty and quiet. Only the clock was ticking overhead. Our heroine understood. She is doing everything right. Dima blessed her. From that day Alia pulled herself together and began to learn how to survive. Shin took an academic leave at the institute for a year and started looking for a job. It was necessary to save at least a little money for childbirth and the child with difficulty. She managed to get a job as a cleaner in one company. The boss did not like her. She always found fault and often scolded her. Look how much dust you left in the corner. Do you think if you are pregnant, then you can work? like a blunder. Let's wash everything here. Alia endured, was silent and worked hard, saving every penny, because now she had a goal, her baby. He had already begun to move and push, and at those moments such joy came over her. The woman stroked her stomach and talked to him, smiling to herself. Despite her difficult financial situation, she managed to cut all the trifle from each salary and feed the poor fellows from the underpass. She felt sorry for them and simply could not pass indifferently. So today she was walking home, and again she saw that guy on crutches. She herself did not understand what was so wrong with him. But again she treated him to a glass of hot tea with a bun, and also put 50 rubles in her cap. The guy, like the first time, was terribly embarrassed and shyly averted his eyes, mumbling. Thank you very much. The woman smiled and already began to move away, when she suddenly heard swearing, screams. She turned around and saw how other homeless people began to take money from the guy, and shout that they gave him a lot for nothing. A fight ensued, three beefy men in leather jackets ran up to the homeless, and began to trample the poor fellow with their feet with all their strength. He cringed, tried to dodge, but all in vain. Not remembering herself, Alia rushed headlong into the thick of things. She bravely waved her bag and shouted, Come on, stop it. What are you doing? This is a living person. You will kill him. I'll call the police now. The thug stopped thrashing the guy and barked at Alia. What do you want, fool? You with a belly, so get out of here. Until you yourself grabbed it. And this one will work for us now. He is lucky, they give him a lot. Alia choked with indignation. Is he a slave? A person's life is already crippled. What did you hook up to him? Didn't he touch anyone? The Trinity laughed in unison. And what did you decide to stand up for him? Did you like lame? So take it for yourself. Just buy it first. Are there a hundred thousand? The bandit spat right under Alia's feet and left. The woman rushed to the guy, gave him a handkerchief to dry off, helped him to his feet, and suggested, come with me to the cafe, I'll feed you lunch. Did you hit hard? The looked at her with such tenderness and gratitude that she had goosebumps all over her body, but then he shook his head, thank you, but I can't leave here. Alia was even offended. Here's a beach, I wholeheartedly, from the bottom of my heart, and he, and walked away. At the exit, Kosui caught up with her, and you are brave. I was not afraid to step in for the new one. Don't be offended by him. He's kind of wonderful. He's silent all the time. He doesn't tell anything about himself. We don't even know his name. How dumb. All evening and morning. This guy on crutches did not leave Alia's head. His gaze, smile, bottomless blue eyes. And again, it was as if an electric discharge passed through the body. Well, here we are. We didn't have enough to fall in love with A. I was completely stunned. It's better to think about a child. Alia scolded herself and tried hard to get the guy out of her head. She had not yet entered the passage, and her heart was already beating wildly in anticipation of a meeting with a mysterious homeless man. Yes, what a misfortune. Again, what is happening to me? Alia did not understand herself, but today the guy just surprised her. He silently handed her a small rose, delicate, white and amazingly beautiful, and embarrassedly said, I was waiting for you. I was afraid that you would not come. This is for you. Alia blushed and was embarrassed. She felt so pleasant and warm from this sign of attention. Now every morning they cross paths, talked a little about this and that. But the main thing is that he looked at her like that. This look cannot be confused with anything. Only beloved Dinka looked at her like that. Alia did not understand at all what was happening to her. She barely endured from meeting to meeting. All thoughts were about him. Warmth filled inside. And like butterflies began to flutter in the stomach. Even the baby calmed down and stopped. Budding. She was angry with herself. Lord, what kind of nonsense. It's just some kind of delusion. You need to pull yourself together and stop thinking about him. I'm pregnant from another man. And he's a homeless person. And even a disabled person. 
Well, why do I need all this and even more so for him? But no matter how much Alia repeated this to herself, and approaching the transition every day, her heart froze and began to pound like crazy. These strange encounters continued for a week. One day, happily descending into the passage, Alia was already habitually looking for her mysterious stranger with her eyes. But he wasn't there. Shen shook her head a hundred times, and tears began to fall down her cheeks. How so? Where did he disappear to? Here you are, Alia, a fool. And what did you want? So that he, like a faithful knight, would always wait for you here. That's all. The good fairy tale ended. The woman felt so bitter and offended. Her mood completely deteriorated. She barely pulled herself together and dejectedly wandered to her hated job. Everything around suddenly became grey. The sky was gloomy, and life was hard and hopeless. She worked her shift with difficulty, and slowly walked home to an empty room where no one was waiting for her. Suddenly, right at the crossroads, the woman saw how a police detachment was wringing the hands of the same thugs who had beaten the guy in the crossing. The young lieutenant commanded everything. She looked up and gasped. This was the very lame bomb from the transition. Her mysterious and enigmatic knight. Only he was not at all lame and not curly. A slender and athletic tall blonde man with a short haircut. But his eyes, those are those deep blue eyes. It's definitely him. There can be no doubt. That's the turn. Alia did not even notice that for 10 minutes she had been standing with her mouth open and round eyes, unable to move. Seeing her, the lieutenant was delighted and approached her. Embarrassed, he began, Hi, you're sorry for this performance, but I was on a special operation and simply had no right to tell anything about myself. The work is like this, but my name is actually Igor. Are you offended by me? Honestly, Alia was only gasping for air, unable to utter a word. She was in complete disarray, and the words stuck in her throat. Igor suddenly took her by the hand, and said quietly, it's time for me to run now. You see for yourself, let's meet tomorrow at our crossing. I invite you on a date. We have a lot to talk about. Will you come? Olga beamed and nodded. The guy continued to lead the detention, and our heroine rushed home, as if on wings. She constantly pulled herself up, and scolded all the way. Damn it, do and you dare. But what about Dima? We need to finish with all this. Well, except that once I go, just talk to him and that's it. All the next day Alia was not herself. She weighed a hundred times, hesitated whether to go or not to go. As a result, at the appointed time, she stood at the crossing like a bayonet. Igor was gone. Olga got angry. Well, it started again. Now he appears, he makes an appointment, then he disappears. Come on, him, the same to me, a hey, mysterious wanderer. She already wanted to leave, when she saw Igor running to meet her, sobbing. He held in his hands a pretty bunch of wild flowers, and waved his arms happily. Alia frowned, actually, these young ladies are late for a date, and somehow we do the opposite. She mumbled offendedly. The guy was embarrassed and began to make excuses. Hello, Olchka. Sorry, not my fault. The boss marinated at the meeting for a long time. Well, I couldn't just break loose and leave. This damn service always spoils my personal life. He chattered. The woman thought out. She felt she was not lying. She asked, well, where are we going? Or will we, out of habit, stand here? Igor blushed again like a boiled cancer. Let's take a walk in the park. The weather is golden. And then there's still a week before the salary. To be honest, I'm completely broke. I can't take you to the restaurant yet. Sorry, you know what our salaries are. But I promise delicious ice cream and a sea of positive. Honestly admitted the guy. Alia was not upset at all. On the contrary, she liked that he spoke about it so honestly and openly. She didn't want to go to any restaurant at all, but it wouldn't hurt her and the baby to take a walk and get some air. They slowly wandered along the alleys and talked. Alia asked, tell us a little about yourself, otherwise you are like a mysterious Mr. X I don't know anything about you. Igor sighed, yes, what to tell. He was married, now divorced, by Larochka stole from me to a rich businessman, changed me. At first I thought I was going crazy, it was so sickening, I didn't want to live at all, so I agreed to participate in this special operation. Despite the risk, I have nothing to lose, I love my wife very much, I never offended you, don't think, what could I give her, a room of 13 meters and life from paycheck to paycheck, and she wanted to go to a resort, to Europe, she kept asking for gold earrings, she tried to persuade me to take more bribes or go into business, but no matter how hard I fought, I could not explain to her, 
that it was not for me. I really love my job, although it is difficult and sometimes very dangerous, and I do not want to quit it, but with her personal life, alas, it is not compatible. What woman wants to wait for her husband from eternal ambushes and operational trips, Alia thoughtfully said. Well, I don't know, I think if you love, then together you can survive everything. I also love my fiancé very much, and him in, for my sake, he went against his parents, he refused wealth, and, nothing, we were very happy, we wanted to get married, the woman suddenly broke off and fell silent, Igor said quietly, and what happened, did he, fall out of love with you and leave you, why are you alone now, Alia sat down on a bench, took in more, air and uttered with difficulty, no, Igor, he died, crashed in an accident, I would give anything in the world to have him back, Dima was the best, after his death, I found out that I was pregnant, I told his parents, I thought they would be delighted, alas, they, only exposed me to ridicule and kicked me out, such is my sad fate, I, don't know what to do next, I found a temporary job, and then, the guy was amazed, and your parents, didn't they support you, my father helped me very morally after the divorce, with a, kind word and advice, Alia became even more sad, I'm from the orphanage, I don't have anyone, or rather, biological parents exist somewhere, but, they don't care about me, I was taken to an orphanage at the age of five, my mother drank deeply, she, never visited me, and you know, I swore that I would never leave my baby, and raise it to its feet, oh, why am I telling you all this, you don't care about my problems, sorry, all you thought, Igor took her hand in his and said quietly, now you're not alone, remember this, I understand everything, you yearn for your husband and still love him, and I don't pretend to anything, let's just be friends, I really like you, I will not hide, going on this task, I certainly did not expect that I, would fall in love with a stranger, but since it happened, don't push me away, let me just be there, and help, just like that, from the bottom of my heart, Alia and Igor became best friends, they trusted each other with all secrets, shared sorrows, and joys, the woman could not believe, that she finally had a kindred spirit, a close person who would always listen, not judge, support and help, but Alia did not even think about being close to Igor, although, to be honest, she was, madly in love with him, and in the depths of her soul she understood that these feelings, had nothing to do with friendship, his heart fluttered and turned over as before every time, he casually touched her, but she stubbornly pushed these thoughts away from herself, deliberately pushing the nascent feeling into the farthest corner of her soul, she often thought about Igor at night, remembered, Dima, compared her feelings and sensations, I shouldn't love him, it's not right, this is a betrayal of Dima, what will I tell my baby, your dad died, and I immediately fell in love with another, and why does Igor need someone else's child, he will be afraid of responsibility, and run away, I suppose, and I will suffer later, but you can't deceive yourself, her whole being was drawn to Igor, she desired him with such force that she could only control herself, with a colossal effort of will, Igor did not seem to notice any of this, and became Alia's guardian angel, he was always there, on hand, helped carry heavy bags, needed her swollen legs and lower back, ran with her through the authorities to draw up documents, quietly put money in her wallet, and food in the refrigerator, I tried to choose only healthy vegetables, and fruits, and at night, clenching his teeth, he growled into the pillow, Lord, why am I such an indecisive blockhead, I myself voluntarily, agreed to the role of a girlfriend, notices and feels nothing for me, not true, I know, what she feels, then why is she torturing me, or should I offer her a hand and heart directly, what if, I push her away from me, she still yearns for her husband, and Alia will close and stop letting me, into your life, then I'll go crazy, these thoughts tormented the guy constantly, and drove him, crazy, he often recalled the moment when he first saw her in that passage, here a cute, snub-nosed girl with a scattering of hemp on her nose, and a funny bang runs to him, and joyfully holds out tea, and a pie, knowing that he is a bum, lame and unhappy, he could not believe, that in this cruel world there were still such disinterested people who knew how to, sympathize and help, and when he looked closer and noticed a slightly protruding belly under the blouse, he was, generally amazed, he takes a penny from himself, and helps the homeless, her fervent laugh, a wave of her eyelashes, a turn of her head, sunk into his soul at first sight, and sat there tightly, when suddenly, in the middle of the night, Alia's water broke and her stomach began to hurt badly, she was mortally frightened, 
and out of habit she immediately dialed Igor, Igor, I'm sorry that I woke up, I think, I'm giving birth, what should I do, so scary, the guy ordered in a businesslike manner, don't panic, I'm calling an ambulance, and going to you, pack your things, everything will be fine, I'm here, and immediately Alia's soul felt better, relieved, Igor walked back and forth along the corridor of the hospital, waiting for something to become known about Alia, but two hours had already passed, and the doctor still did not come out, finally, the door opened and a concerned nurse ran out, she chattered, are you Kuznetsova's husband, Igor answered without hesitation, yes, but what about her, the girl said, she had a very large fetus and a breech presentation, she had to urgently, undergo an operation, the woman has lost a lot of blood and is in intensive care, I need to do a, transfusion urgently, what is your blood type, the frightened guy blurted out, the second positive, the nurse was delighted, excellent, Fitz, are you ready to become a donor, and donate blood for your wife, Igor quickly answered, what kind of question, of course I agree, if only she got better, Alia woke up already in intensive care, wanted to get up, but a sharp pain in the lower abdomen pierced, her body, she even screamed, a nurse ran up to her, you don't need to jump up sharply, you still can't get up, the seams may come apart, Alia shook her head, and not finding the baby next to her, she screamed in a panic, what is wrong with me, where is my child, why isn't he around, is he alive, the nurse reassured her, don't worry, you have a boy, a, hero, for 200, I had to have an operation, and your husband agreed to be a donor, in fact he saved, both of your lives, everything terrible is behind, now everything will be fine with you, don't worry, Alga was shocked, wow, Igor saved her life without even thinking, does that mean, he really loves her, she was immensely grateful to him for everything, and yet, she lay in, said to herself, Dimochka, I know, you see and know everything, we had a son, I will call, him Yegorushka, like your beloved grandfather, about whom you talked so much and whom you, loved so much, congratulations, dear, the nurse brought the baby and handed it to Alia, take it, mommy, son, when she took her rosy cheeked, well fed Budas in her arms, a whole avalanche of happiness and tenderness swept over her, it was a completely different love, blind, boundless and all consuming, Alia was breastfeeding Yegorka, he smacked his lips funny and tried, he was, already puffing, then she kissed his nose for a long time, tiny fingers and tears of their own rolled down her, cheeks from bliss and happiness, only now did the words of the, wise woman gynecologist fully reach her, who dissuaded her from a fatal, and irreparable mistake, she would, never be able to forgive herself for such a sin, Alia whispered in the baby's ear, my beloved, son, I am so happy that I have you, a week later, Igor met Alia in a taxi from the, hospital with flowers and balloons, for some reason, he was terribly worried, and worried, shifting from foot to foot, the nurse shouted to him, well, you froze, dad, go, take your son, there is a hero, all in his father, and Shin, handed the envelope with the baby right into the hands of the guy, Alia felt embarrassed, she tried to say, you didn't understand, he didn't, but suddenly stopped in mid-sentence, seeing how he carefully, holds the baby and proudly walks down the street with him, the first month was not easy for both, Alia became a mother for the first time, Igor had no experience of communicating with babies either, everything was, like at the front, feeding, bottles, scheduled walks with the baby, laundry, diapers, undershirts, Yegorka had a stomach ache all the time, and he screamed heart-rendingly at midnight, mom didn't, get enough sleep, and she looked like a robot, because she was already going crazy from her son's constant crying, she, didn't understand what was happening to him, and rocked and rocked, nothing helped, Igor's mother came to the rescue, having heard, from her son what and how, she immediately got her bearings, well, you give, guys, the child is large, and milk is probably not enough, here he is not full and cries all the time, tell Alia to feed, him from a bottle with mixtures, it should help, and indeed, after a more satisfying, feeding, Yegorka began to sleep better, and calm down a little, Igor helped her as much as he could, gave her the opportunity to, take a nap for a couple of hours during the day, and walked at that time in the park with the baby, ran to the pharmacy, and the dairy, kitchen, the first time they bathed Yegor together, both hands trembled terribly, Alia was still afraid, that the water was too hot, that the baby, God forbid, would swallow it, or even worse, choke, she panicked a lot, 
but Igor confidently supported Yegor and reassured the young inexperienced mother, although in his heart he was no less scared. In these chores, half a year flew by like one moment. Igor became so attached to Alia and Yegor that he could no longer imagine life without them. He learned to mess around with it, play, rock it, and did it with great pleasure. Alia, too, could not do a day without Igor. He became part of her family with Yegor. How many times did she think, Lord, I would never have done it myself. It's good that Igor is near, but they did not dare to confess openly their feelings to each other. Everything was in a semi-suspended state, burning eyes, half hints, the spark smoldering between them reached its climax. Alia was all tormented by pangs of conscience. What to do? She often mentally turned to Dima at night. Darling, what should I do? I loved you very much, you know, and I remember you. I miss you, but Igor needs a father, and Igor really loves me. I feel it. And I, probably, too. He is, very good, reliable, you understand. Only it seems to me that I am betraying you. What should I do? But everything was decided by chance. Once Igor came back from duty, and the first thing he did was run to Yegorka. He sat in the playpen and babbled in his childish language, rattling a multi-colored rattle. Igor, trying not to frighten the child with his bass said as gently as possible, where is our Yegorushka, and look what I brought, which groovy green frog do you like, suddenly, the kid turned to Igor, held out his hands, and distinctly murmured, pa pa pa, smiling with his toothless mouth, Alia was stunned, it's just not possible, he didn't even speak to his mother, and then, several times in a row, the Pope pronounced distinctly, the, happy man was moved to tears, he picked up the little one in his arms, pressed him to him and whispered, you are my son, Igor helped Alia put the baby to bed, and then said, I'll be away for a while, don't be sad, I'll be there soon. Alia was alarmed, Igor, where are you going? Something happened, he did not answer, gave her a friendly kiss on the cheek, and sped away. Alia waited for him for an hour, and imperceptibly dozed off. Suddenly, someone softly touched her on the shoulder. Alia started up and rubbed her eyes in bewilderment. Igor was on one knee in front of her. In his hand he held some kind of box, and a bouquet of gorgeous roses. Olchka, marry me. I cannot take it anymore. I love you and Yegorka very much, and I will become the best husband and father for you. Don't push me away anymore. I am not iron. After all, I feel that you are also not indifferent. Every time I look at you and suffocate with desire, I know how you love Dima, but he won't get it back. I think he would be glad to know that his family is under reliable protection. Stop torturing me and yourself. You agree. You have five minutes to think. If you say no, I'll understand and I'll never bother you again. I need to decide right now. I can't do this anymore. Instead of answering, Olga leaned over to Igor and passionately kissed him on the lips. At that moment, not a spark flared between them, but a fire broke out from passion and desire. Igor carried Alia to the bedroom in his arms and began to kiss every millimeter of her body, bringing her beloved to the pinnacle of bliss. He wanted to savor this moment as long as possible. He whispered to her in a fit of passion. Beloved, dear, how I feel good with you. She hugged him so tightly, literally dissolving in him, as if she was afraid that this bliss would disappear at any second. Both have not experienced such intensity of passions and peak of pleasure for a very long time. Later, when they were resting after their heavenly delight, they lay on the bed under the moonlight. Alia laid her head on his chest and listened to his even breathing, and even in a dream he stroked her tenderly and hugged her waist. She was no longer tormented by her conscience and doubts that she was betraying Dinka. Now she knew for sure that she would never find a better husband and father for Yegorka anywhere. The couple signed. Igor's parents received Alia very well. They were happy to mess around with Igorka on weekends. After all, they saw how their son blossomed and wanted to live next to this sweet, snub-nosed girl. He directly shone all over, and Olchka took care of him so much. Always hot, soup, instead of a thermos with tea and sandwiches, she was sympathetic to his difficult work, did not scold and did not saw, like the previous daughter-in-law, and the fact that she is with a child is not a problem. We grow up, we educate, they decided. But Igor had the last unresolved family matter. From the moment of that heart-to-heart -heart conversation in the park, he still could not understand how it happened that his grandfather and grandmother did not want to know their grandson. It's just not human. But Alia categorically refused to talk about this topic. She was mortally offended by them. 
they insulted me for nothing and did not support me at the most difficult moment of my life. Therefore, the husband decided, in secret from Alia, to talk to them himself. He himself did not know why he was doing this, but he reasoned that the attempt was not torture. The next day after duty, he went straight to their house. I was very worried about what to say to them, how to start a conversation. There was a photo of Igoaka in the shirt pocket. The kid was smiling in the picture, demonstrating the only tooth that had come out from the bottom. Igor expected to see pompous and arrogant majors, because Alia described them as such. When he rang the doorbell, a tired old woman with traces of her former gloss opened it. She looked inquiringly at Igor. Hello, who are you two? The guy hesitated a little, didn't know where to start the conversation. Hello, my name is Igor. I have a conversation with you. Can I go through? Otherwise it's somehow uncomfortable at the door. He was afraid that right now the door would be slammed in front of him. After all, not everyone will agree to let a stranger into the house. But to his surprise, the woman shrugged her shoulders and waved. Well, come in. There was a steady smell of drugs in the room. An elderly man was lying on the bed, covered with a blanket. Nearby on the bedside table was a device for measuring pressure. He looked haggard and sick. Weakly asked, Valentina, do we have guests? Who is this? She answered absently, I don't know yet, Stepan. Now let's listen to what this young man came to us with. Igor did not beat around the bush and began with the main thing. I am the husband of Olga Kuznetsova. Does this name mean anything to you? The elderly woman changed her face and answered angrily, Of course, this is the same viper that killed our son, Dimochka. I hate her. Why did you come here? What you need? The guy took out a photo of Yegorka from his pocket and handed it to the woman. And this is your own grandson, Yegor. He is half a year old. Take a closer look. He looks so much like your late son. I saw his portrait. It still hangs in our apartment. Alia does not know that I have come to you. It's up to you to love Alia or hate her. But how can you refuse a grandson? I just don't understand. You don't have a heart. Think over my words. We don't need anything from you. We live well with Alia. Just know that if you want to see your grandson, now is the time. Goodbye. Oh, and one more thing. Alia loved your son very much. You shouldn't talk about her like that. Igor abruptly turned around and left. Yes, well, people. It was not for nothing that Alia did not want to see them, most unpleasant persons. After Igor left, Stepan Andreevich said to his wife, Well, why are you like this, Valia? How can? Look at the photo. This is the spitting image of Dimka. His eyes and eyebrows are a direct copy. How much do you and I have left? What kind of life do we have after Dima's death? Some pills and injections. Maybe stop hating that poor girl and really start communicating with your grandson. I'm tired of living like this, Valia. He turned to the wall and silently sobbed, covering his face with his hands. Valentina herself understood that with her fierce hatred for Olga she was simply trying to drown out the pain from the loss of her only son. But how to force yourself to forgive Olga, and the boy, is really a copy of Dima. You can't argue here, no genetic examination is needed. A week later, Alia's room got a call. Igor was on shift. Opening the door, she even recoiled in surprise. Dinka's parents were standing on the threshold. Lord, how did they find me? What do they need? There is definitely nothing good to expect from these people. Flashed through her head. Stepan Andreevich started first. Hello, Alia, can I come in? The hostess silently let the unpleasant visitors through. But she continued to stand in the corridor and looked at them questioningly. The man continued. I understand that you are not happy to see us. We treated you badly and vilely. And, we ask your forgiveness. We want to communicate with our grandson. Ken, after all, this is the only, made of blood, Dimkino continuation. Valentina, without waiting for Alia's answer, went to the arena. Igoaka nonchalantly gurgled, babbled in his childish language, sorting through the, toys. She held out her hands to him, and spoke. Hi, Yegorushka, look what grandma, brought you. Valentina took out beautiful soft multi-colored cubes from the bag and handed one to the baby. He took it in his hands with interest, began to examine it in surprise and smile, exposing his only tooth. The woman suddenly wept softly, my god, well, a copy of Dimachka, and a smile, and a birthmark on the neck, exactly like a son's. Forgive me, Olchka, how wrong I was, considering you unlucky and walking. After all, I seriously thought that this was someone else's child, not from Dima. 
Olga relented and suggested, All right, whoever remembers the old, that eye is out, let's go have some tea. I baked the cabbage pie. An hour later, they were quite friendly and peacefully talking. Stepan solemnly held Yegorka on his knees, and the latter twisted his grandfather's ear and laughed out loud. When Igor returned home in the evening, Alia excitedly told him the news. Igor, can you imagine? Dinka's parents came and asked for forgiveness. They want to communicate with Yegorka, and he immediately reached out to them. When he saw, as if he felt that they were dear people, really great, I'm so glad that we reconciled. It became so easy on my heart, as if a stone had fallen from my soul. Igor looked with tenderness at his Olchka and thought, excellent, so my plan worked. So, I got through to the heart of Stepan and Valentina, and he answered aloud, you see, how wonderful. In time, Grandma and Grandpa changed their minds. So, now Yegorka already has two grandmothers and two grandfathers. He hugged Alia and kissed him gently, pleased with himself. It often happens in life. Happiness is fleeting and is replaced by grief or tragedy. It seems that life is over and there is no light. But you must definitely believe that after the black stripe, the white one will definitely come and everything will sparkle with other new colors. The main thing is not to lose heart and remain a kind and sympathetic person, no matter what, and fate will surely reward for this in full.